Welcome back to episode 25 of the Women of Wrestling podcast here at ringbellsonline.com. Stu Allen, Lee Burton, and we are 25, Lee. 25 already? How long's that took? Just, just shy of two years, so we're doing quite well for ourselves. Yeah, all things considered, we've had a few uh, momentary aberrations where we've gone a couple of months without having shows, but yeah, we call them winter breaks. We call them winter breaks. That's going to be the big thing this year to see whether we can actually get through winter and still uh, still produce podcasts. But we're uh, (laughs) we're producing content like you wouldn't believe nowadays, and we've got a really cool guest uh, coming up here this evening, somebody that uh, I'm actually really stoked to talk to. And that's Hilly Hatred. Uh, yes, she's looking to, looking to be a, a pretty interesting guest because she, here's someone who lives in Japan now. We're actually going to be calling her in Japan. Yes. Um, I'm aware that, you know, Hilly Hatred, and I know this from looking around some some of her, some, some websites and some stuff, you've got biographical information about Hilly Hatred, and uh, there are several sites that kind of have stories of when she was around in the US, and then it just dries up. Like, no one paid attention to the fact that this woman has gone and lived in Japan for the last several years, trained in the dojo system that over there, really established herself in Japan to the point where she's now the JWP Openweight Champion. And yet still doesn't have a Wikipedia page. She doesn't have a Wikipedia page. As I say, like, her profiles, if you look on, I don't want to particularly call them out, but Online World of Wrestling and and various other wikis and so on that have got information about people, it just dries up. No one's got any information about this girl since she went to Japan. And that's a shame. As I say, she's really done well for herself over there, and we're going to get a chance to catch up with her, find out what's going on. So... If you don't know who Healy Hatred is, or you've only got vague memories of maybe seeing her on a DVD a few years ago, stick around. Um, we talked to uh, Amazing Kong a little while ago, and she was really interested in talking about what it was like uh, living in Japan and working in Japan and training in Japan. And I hope that uh, Haley's going to be able to do somewhat, uh, somewhat of a similar job as far as giving us a, an insight that you really don't get anywhere else. Haley's possibly well one of the most important women in wrestling right now and i don't think it i don't think it's uh, it's um, hyperbole to say that either no that's actually true and uh, as far as jwp is concerned jwp now with you know some of the the joshi promotions closing up jwp is the longest running uh, joshi promotion in japan so the belt that haley has got is actually the one that's got the most length the most tenure uh, and by default the most prestige in japan so yeah and it's very rare for, well, it's not very rare, it, it's unheard of for a non-Japanese wrestler to be holding that title. Yeah, it's never happened before. And as far as the, the, the modern Joshi scene is concerned, and I'm sort of talking here really since the downfall of All Japan Woman, um, there hasn't been an American or a foreign champion of any sort since uh, since Kong. Uh, so yeah, Haley Hatred's coming up later on, that's going to be fun. Uh, before we get there... Um, a little bit of uh, housekeeping notes and so on. You can uh, interact with us, email us, tweet us, Facebook us, whatever. Ringbells at gmail.com, at ringbells on Twitter, facebook.com slash ringbells. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, uh, how things are going. We want to know because, you know, we want to try and make the site better. Do us a favour as well, actually. If you're listening to this on iTunes, if you're subscribed to us via iTunes, I know there are a lot of people you are, Give us a review on iTunes. I don't know if it makes any great difference, but it would certainly make my day if you go and give us a a star rating and uh, maybe put a couple of lines about what you like about the show. Stick it on iTunes. It it looks good. Likewise, if there's any guests that you want to hear of on the Women of Wrestling podcast, or even on our shorter uh, audio shows called Fight Like a Girl, which aren't on iTunes, by the way, you have to go to the website to listen to those. If there's anybody you think might be quite interesting for those um, segments... Let us know, and let us know why you think they're interesting as well. Yeah, we've got we've got plans in mind, nonetheless. But by all means, if you can suggest something and we go, wow, that's a great idea, we'll certainly chase it up. And it's not just audio we're dealing with on the site as well, in case you haven't been looking. We've also got a lot of uh, a lot of text going on there, lots of different articles, lots of different thoughts and opinions on what's going on in the world of wrestling. Yep, and this month, actually, we hope and plan to debut not one, not two, but three new contributors to the site as well. So keep your eye on that. Lots of different opinions coming up, ladies and gents. It's all fun. It's all fun. It's all fun. So with that, 
should we just go to the interview? Yeah, let's. Okay, and we are back on the Women of Wrestling podcast with our guest at this time. Very special guest, the uh, lady covered in titles at the minute, the TLW Women's Champion, the Hybrid Fighting Champion, the TLW Women's Tag Team Champion, and most importantly, now the JWP Openweight Champion as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Haley Hatred is here. Hello. <laughs> and Haley Hatred, who, uh, if she sounds a little bit strange to people, uh, tell us what happened yesterday. Yes, yesterday in my match, I got uh, kicked in the trachea, so my throat is a little bit um, sore and damaged, to say the very, very least. So I, I sound a little, a little bit boyish, a little bit raspy. So I'm sorry about that. So we want to say a double thank you then, not only for for giving us some time to talk to us, but actually doing it through uh, through injury as well. Hey, no problem at all. <laughs> so. The JWP Openweight Championships is as good a place to start as any. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a tremendous honor. Uh, anybody that follows uh, Japanese wrestling will know that there's only very few select foreigners ever get a chance to win a major singles title in Japan. Um, I mean, what does that mean to you, being the uh, the JWP Openweight Champion now? Yeah, I mean, actually even getting the opportunity to fight for a championship here is like just such a huge honor. and um, I, I, you know, I don't know what it's like in the UK, but I know in the States, it's like championship titles and championship matches are given out like, you know, like candy, like anybody can get one, <laughs> you know, and it's not a big deal. But here it's so difficult. And um, I fought for JWP for about three years before I got my first title shot. And um, I mean, honestly, it was my first singles match in that company, too. So I feel like the only reason I got that title shot was because I had two of my own championships to put up. So it's just it's hard and um you know stressful enough to even get a shot at the belt and um you know to win it it's just like like i can't put it into words it's incredible and amazing and you know it's like part of me feels like something's like lifted off my shoulders like i've worked so hard to finally get here and then the other part of me is just like two more tons are down on my shoulders because now everybody's gunning for me <laughs> so, but i'm really enjoying the ride you know it's, it's been a couple weeks and it's been an incredible couple weeks yeah. Well, has it sunk in yet? That's that's the thing. Like you're saying, it has been a couple of weeks. But I guess this is something which is, like like Stu said, not just rare, but it's also sort of pioneering for you. You're the the, you're the first non-Japanese uh, woman to hold that title. So has it sunk in, the fact that that is you? You're the person? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. And it's, it's been, um, <clears throat> it's actually, I think, been so busy for me since I've won. I mean, I was really busy, especially the, the six weeks or so leading up to it. But um, it's been just really incredible, like um, really time consuming since I've won it. I've done like interviews and photo shoots and, and magazine stuff and videos and whatnot. Like I've been busy every single day. Like I've had to go to the gym like three different times a day just to get like a good workout in because I have to keep running to different cities to do things. So I don't know. I feel like a celebrity or something is silly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you put up some pictures um, today actually on your Facebook uh, of uh – the match that you had with Leon, uh, the the match where you won the belt, and uh, there's there's some tremendous action shots in there. I just wanted to mention. I mean, there's there, there's at least one where you're getting kicked straight in the face, and uh, I've I've seen a picture of you like a couple of days afterwards. You had this massive, massive shiner. Uh, I mean, you've you've gone through the wars to to get where you are. Yeah, you know, Leon <clears throat> Leon's incredible, and um, if anything, she's a bit underrated, and um. I don't ever want to say that I go into a fight, like, not expecting everything, but, um, you know, with her, I'd never had a singles match with her, and I'd only had one, maybe two tag matches with her, so I really didn't, um, have a lot of personal experience, so, like, when I'm watching DVDs, you know, I know the moves that she does, and I know her style, and I prepared for everything but her to, like, kick my butt, like, she was, like, so strong and like so aggressive and um like such a hard striker in that match like and I just didn't prepare at all for that like and it just sounds foolish on my part saying that now but I mean usually if you watch her she's very speedy she's very um you know she's a lot of finesse she has a lot of nice holds and whatnot um she's very much of an aerial wrestler um so like where she fits in you know kicking people in the face I don't know but she does like she just she was you know, I expected a lot her being a champion and her, her being um her being her second defense and you know being the tournament finals and everything. I expected a lot, this kind of a special fight from her, but um I didn't expect all that. And yeah, she she definitely caught me in the eye with a kick and um 
and she set me up for a, a spider German, and I'm just, like, sitting up there, like, it's, like, a minute after the cake, and my eyes already, like, swollen shut, and I'm just like, man, like, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe it's you know again because we talked about the fact that you were a, you were a foreigner getting to win the belt. She made you earn it. So, yeah, I think that's that's one of your badges of honor, I guess. Indeed, indeed. Um, as far as the sort of whirlwind couple of weeks you've had, I want to talk <clears> about something that happened yesterday actually, um, and that was uh, you had main evented the last JWP show it was a six woman tag match yourself. Ran Yu Yu and Toshi Yu and Matsu against uh, Kori Yonayama, uh, Kyoko Haruyama and Subasa. You uh, you won the match. You pinned uh, Yonayama with a, a running Liger bomb, but she cut a promo afterwards. And I've seen the video of it, and I you know I can't speak Japanese, so I don't know exactly what she said. But but she announced her retirement, and uh, and I know you've sort of gone on both your Twitter and your Facebook in the last day, and and sort of said that you know this is sort of really upset you. As far as the fact you've got an open floor now, I mean, what what does uh, Kori Yonayama mean to you? Yeah, I mean, her announcing it was really upsetting. It's, like, such a bummer because she's young and she's still really good. Like, and it, it actually has nothing to do with her injury. I just want to clear that up. Like, she had a broken jaw um, and she was only out for, like, three months. It was actually the second time she's had that injury in her career. Mm. But it's, like, she just came back from that injury and, like, it was like she didn't even miss any time, you know. She just got right back into it, right back into having, like, good matches. And, like, I mean, her timing, she didn't have any ring rust. It was, like, phenomenal. I was just talking to her about it the other day. Like, how do you do that? Like, if I I feel like if I don't wrestle for a couple of weeks, I'm just, like, a new wrestler. <laughs> like, she's, like, she's in a hospital bed for, like, a month, like, drinking out of a straw. And she's, like, absolutely fine when she comes back. But, yeah, she, um, she just, you know, she said she always... Um, when she, you know, hit 30, she wanted to hang up the boots and do something else. And, you know, she's sticking to that. And it's just like, I, you know, I, I'm trying to be as happy as I can for her and like support that, um, opinion and idea. Um, but it, at the same time, it's just hard for me to understand it. Like for me, you know, I'm, I'm just a couple years younger than her, but for me, there's, you know, not another life outside of wrestling. So I can't imagine like hanging your boots up and like, you know, being a doctor or like, you know, this, owning a restaurant or whatever, you know, people do with their lives after wrestling. It's just, it's hard to imagine, but I suppose that time does come. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's sad because, like, she's so good and I feel she's underrated. I feel like not everybody knows her name that should because she's so versatile. She's so smart. Like, you know, she's so full of charisma and, like, you just can't help but, like, watch her and, like, feel, like, warm inside, you know what I mean? And it's just, like... She's, like, a great, like, luchador. Like, I'd love to see her in Mexico. I'd absolutely kill to see her in the States. I'd love to see her in the U.K. Just, you know, touring the world and stuff. And um, I really hope that happens. You know, she's got till December, and it's a quick, quick few months. But I would absolutely love to hear that she's doing a retirement tour. Um, you know, and, uh, cross my fingers, I guess. <laughs> well, you know about, we know about wrestling retirements, I suppose. You know, somebody says that they're retiring and then they, they, they quit and then they've they got the urge and they come back. Do you think this is one of those retirements where that's it? Or is it a case of, well, I might be open to suggestion? Yeah, I don't think it's that. Like, I, I'm, like, 99.9% .9 confident when she hangs it up, she's really going to be done. Like, most of the girls here, um, especially ones who set out, like, a specific, like, age limit, like, this is how long I'm going to do this, um, they actually stick to it. They don't, you know, they don't come back. Because a retirement here, too, is, is such a, like, celebratory thing. Like, um, you just, I mean, I, I can't imagine ever retiring, but I think if I went through that, like, I wouldn't want to come back. It's such a, like, it's such a beautiful closing chapter, like, especially a December retirement, like December's when all the best shows are here, you know, and it's just like such a beautiful thing. So I don't think anybody would even want to come back after that. You know what I mean? So I for sure think she's actually, you know, she's for sure just going to be done when, when she's done. Toshi Yamatsu, who you were talking with, actually, she's retiring uh, next year as well. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like, you know, a few of the veterans now are finally uh, looking to hang things up. Uh, I mean, what, what do you make of that? as far as uh, I mean Neil closed last year as well and Tamura retired um, how do you see the Joshi scene in 2011 and going forward into 2012 um, I mean it's time for the young girls and the mid card girls to step up you know like the girls who have four or five years wrestling like it's really time for them 
start looking like main eventers and that's um especially in the japan scene um especially with like the kohai and senpai you know mentality here um that's a little early but you know it's like this, this is the challenge you know like these are the the months right now that are you know going to shape the future of women's wrestling here and you know the girls everyone has to step up like i have to step up you know the girls at my dojo have to step up the young girls have to step up and the vets like you know honestly i hope they can keep up with us because i think we're going to come at it a little bit stronger than you know they're anticipating so i think we'll give them a little bit of a run for their money it's a nice thought. I always like to ask this as well from people, uh, especially, again, who might have a, an insight that other people don't have, but who would you be looking at as people who, you know, you know particularly well that can be uh, that next generation? I think names that are really familiar, um, especially with American and UK fans, are um, you know, Hiroyo Matsumoto and Tomoka Nakagawa. Those two, I mean, they're tearing it up, and, you know, they have Oz tag belts right now and Oz if you follow it is like such a um, a company I, I want to put this lightly but it's <laughs> you don't see young girls winning their, their tag belts very often mm. or any championship so um, it's really really nice and those two have a lot of popularity and they're very versatile and they're smart you know they're they speak English um, they speak Spanish like you know they're doing really well and I think they're very marketable you know it's it's really, really helpful to go to another country and learn another style of wrestling and then demonstrate that, um, you know, in your home country. So those those two going to, you know, um, America and then uh, Nakagawa went to Mexico, you know, her being, to, her being able to incorporate that style into, you know, Joshi style here, it's really, really beneficial and it's really good. And the fans really, like, they really consider them, like, such superstars now that they've, you know, went, to another country like it really puts them on a pedestal and puts them apart so it's awesome too like now that you see like some of the ice ribbon girls are going to be going to the uk and they're going to be going to Shikara. so that's really cool like everyone's you know kind of hopping on the train like let's do this it does sound like a really good thing that there are so many different girls who are looking to go to other countries learn different things and learn different styles and be able to incorporate it, it, it you know you it, it we mentioned about like hybrids earlier and i think it must be really good just to not just rest on your laurels, I suppose, and be, maybe become but more versatile in what you can do. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, you when you it's just like training and like um, you know, I feel like the states is a bit more versatile. Like where I came up, you know, training, I guess, um, because if you go to different regions, and I can't say for the UK since I've never been, but um, when you go to different regions, there's a little bit of different styles. So if you go to the East Coast, it's a bit different from the West Coast, which is different from the South, which is, I guess, kind of different from the North. Um, so it's like, I feel like Japan is a little bit more condensed, you know, especially like Tokyo, like everybody in the world lives in Tokyo, you know what I mean? So like, uh, to, to make the far out venture to like Osaka, like a six hour drive, like that's just like Looney Tunes, you know, So a lot of the style is the same here. And, and like you said, a bit condensed and, um, so it is nice to, you know, go out and try it to incorporate something new because if you... I mean, if, if you do a different arm drag here, it's going to get noticed, like, just because it's not the typical thing that's taught in the dojo, you know, so that's great that they're being ambitious. Hmm. Uh, I have curiosity, then, as far as, as, as far as, you know, talking about the new girls coming up and who would be the next generation, of the people of the previous generation, who's been the biggest thrill for you to actually get to wrestle, or who have you learned most from? Um, let's see... I, you know, I, I've enjoyed my time with, um, with Nakagawa and with, uh, Masamoto. I did, like, a stable with Nakagawa. Um, so, I mean, those two, that they just, like, stick out in my mind, I guess, a little bit more than other people. Um, let's see. I don't know how you would consider her, but, like, um, I don't know if she, like, with her time in the business, but, um, Natsuki Tayo, she's amazing. Um, you know, she's in, um, uh, stardom now. So, um, she's really good. Like, I hope, you know, she's getting a little bit more notice than maybe she has in the past. Um, but, you know, with her career, I'm not completely 100% sure how long her career has been. So I don't know if she's considered like a up and comer or like a new generation girl. But I would consider her new generation just because she hasn't gotten her fair due yet. You know, so she's really good. And then, um, you know, a couple that I really, really like a couple of the Ice Ribbon girls. Like, they really work hard. Um, like, Jacasa is just like just a ball of like energy and she's so sweet and you know she's going to be great like she can main event Koyaku and Hall no problem you know so I am 
I think she's going to Takara, so that'll be really good. She is. Be able to, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, she'll be able to bring that new experience and that new, you know, that new opportunity to, like, learn, like, American-style charisma, if you will. <laughs> like, she gets to bring that back to Japan, and again, like, they'll really just put her on a pedestal just because she traveled internationally. That sort of reminds me of a story I remember hearing years ago. It was after Takamichi Noki first came to America and uh-huh. uh, wrestled in WWF for the first time. He went back to Japan and he was uh, flipping people off and giving them the middle finger and telling them to go and fuck themselves. And uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> every, everyone was like, wow. So I don't know. I could kind of imagine uh, Sakasa Fujimoto doing that. That would be, uh, that would be pretty hard. <laughs> be- I would absolutely love to see her doing that. That, that would, would just be... Okay. If she, ice cream. <laughs> if she she's a tiny little lady, though. If she doesn't learn it, <laughs> if she doesn't learn it in America, if she happens to be one of the girls who comes over in the UK, um, we'll, we'll, we'll teach we'll, her. We'll teach her. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be great. That'll be so great. Um, but yeah. So, what, what, what about the veterans, though? Who, who's who's been sort of most responsible? Do you think for um, you know who do you, who do you like working with as far as a veteran? Who do you, who have you learned most from? Oh. um... I don't know who I've learned the most from, but, you know, definitely Toyota, Manami Toyota, like, really sticks out. Like, um, I've I've been tagging a lot with her at Reina, and, um, like, so I've, you know, gotten to do a little bit more training with her than I normally would, just seeing her at a typical show, and she's just, like, she's so fantastic. Like, here she is, she's been wrestling, you know, I don't want to make her sound anything derogatory, but she's been wrestling nearly as long as I've been alive, and the woman is, like, still, like like very open-minded and I think that's honestly why she's like the best in the world like she's just so like humble and you know like for example we're like we're teaching her like um it's so ridiculous that I would say that we're teaching her anything but we're showing her like um Mexican style wrestling like lucha style wrestling and showing her like uh you know hurricanes and like head scissors and stuff like that like styles that she hasn't learned even though she's um she's actually wrestled in Mexico before like you know a while ago um and it's just like she's like willing to learn this like i think in any other line of work and heck i would say most of the wrestlers that i've met like if you meet somebody who's like got over a handful of years in the business like oh let me show you this or you know check out this new hold or submission it's like they would just be like yes screw off like who who are you you know but she's just like okay you know can i try it again does it look good like is it perfect and it's just like i was actually talking to matsumoto about that just like how amazing is that like how open-minded she is like she just has like one of the purest most beautiful hearts in wrestling like and um she doesn't speak a lot of english <clears throat> unfortunately so we can't really have deep conversations you know because i don't speak a lot of japanese but um she's just so cool like she's great she really really is and um you know even though she only has a couple more um, years in the business than i do uh yoneyama i've learned a lot from like she's had a kind of a different i guess upbringing in wrestling than i have and um you know, she's, I mean, she's always been, like, the underdog, you know, and she's always, like, had, like, the dojo life. She, like, she's been with one company her entire life, so she has quite the different, um, like, you know, career path than I've had. Um, but I've, I really learned, she's, I mean, she's hands down the most important person to me in Japan. Like, she's been the most influential and, like, just the most helpful and, um, I've learned so much from her. She's great. And, um, you know, Bolshoi is very amazing as well, of course. Like, training with her is just, fantastic and you know she really knows her stuff like she's been around a long time she knows lucha stuff she knows um no japanese stuff so it's a good combination so there's a lot of people i can sit there and name but i'll stick with those three fair enough I, I, you you sort of brought training up and i think that's probably just a good place to, to, to sort of transition into that um Jamelia Kraft, a U.S. wrestler, has just recently gone over to Japan for a year to, to go into the dojo there and, and wrestle with Diana, uh, with Kyoki Onoe. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've, we've just had a friend, actually, from the U.K., who's uh, literally just turned up last week uh, in Japan, and she's going to be training with Ice Ribbon, a girl called April Davids. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, those are, those are Americans going into the, the Japanese dojo system, which is something you've done. How difficult is it, as a foreigner, to get accepted? into the, the system. I, I'm thinking those two probably are going to have different experiences than I had because um, they're being brought over specifically for, like, one company. So, like, that company, like, kind of expects them, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm sure they're going to be very, like, um, you know, very hospitable towards them. Um, when I came here, I came for, like, men's groups, like, men's indie groups. Um, 
in in the beginning. So um, I was kind of I'm I'm a freelancer technically. So um, but I do have like a company, but um, like an outside company, not like a dojo company. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm technically a freelancer. <laughs> it's, it's all this is making sense. But anyway, um, so when I came when I was coming from men's indies, like typically men and women don't train that much together, so I didn't get a lot of opportunities. <clears throat> so um, I actually like had to take it upon myself to go out and join the other dojos. Um, so. I mean, I, I find Japanese people as a whole, like, you know, very kind and very, very, you know, honorable and respectful. But, um, you know, it was difficult because I was an outsider. I was a foreigner. You know, I wasn't someone who was necessarily, like, invited per se. I mean, they were welcoming, but they were also, like, hard on me. You know what I mean? They're like, well, you know, let's see, what, let's see what this girl has. And like I said, it was at a time when not a lot of foreigners were here. And, well, no foreign girls were here. Um, so, you know, it was difficult for sure to like prove myself but um it's completely worth it once you do gain the respect like they really are very appreciative and very helpful and like my favorite thing about Japanese training is just like the how much of a perfectionist about everything they are like I've, re- I've wrestled with veterans who like are just like so like and at them getting like the moves perfect and, and getting submissions and timing like just perfect like even if they've been wrestling longer than me like they'll ask like my opinion on something and it's just like that's nice like to, I think that's the key with anything with evolution with it with all of it is just constantly like being humble enough to always learn and always ask someone else's opinion and take someone else's opinion no matter what their background is and you know where they came from and so the you know, the fact that they do that here, it's just really, really great. So I'm sure those two are going to have great experiences, you know, like now that there are more foreigners here and, um, you know, like I said, those two, I, I'm guessing more invited by those dojos. So I'm sure they're, you know, getting all their English speakers out and all of that good fun stuff. So well, you mentioned having... that. You mentioned about the English speaking thing. I know that uh, April doesn't speak that much Japanese. It's you know, maybe enough so she doesn't die out there or something. But what about uh, <laughs> what about yourself? When, when you went out there, was it a case that you had learned a little bit, or did you just go out there completely cold and just think I'll sort of work it out as I go along? Yeah, um, when I when, when I first come here, um, I'd already been to like Mexico, so like I was. And I didn't speak Spanish when I went to Mexico. Like, my background is actually French, so that's completely not helpful in any pro wrestling sport. <laughs> um, so, yeah, when I went to Mexico, I got pretty decent at training and not, like, knowing the specifics of what they were saying, just, like, communicating through body language. So I kind of had, like, a bit of that benefit when I came here, but I I spoke, like, you know, at least a handful of, like, Spanish words, like, a Japanese I didn't know anything about, like, it was just terrible, like, it was, it was so bad, I mean, and now that I can communicate, like, now that I train at, like, MMA dojos and stuff like that, like, I've, I've learned a lot more, like, Japanese words and, and phrases and whatnot, um, but, um, speaking of Spanish, I ended up getting, like, moderately good at Spanish, and, um, <clears throat> a lot of people here speak Spanish in dojos, because they've worked so much with, like, luchadors, or they've been in Mexico themselves, so, like, especially at JWP when I was training there, like, that was, like, my immediate, like, way to communicate with them was speaking Spanish. So it was very funny. Like, an American girl speaking Spanish and Japanese girl speaking Spanish. Like, all of our accents are just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's strange. Um, how tough is it in the dojo system? I mean, I'm asking you this because, um, I don't know if you've ever seen it or not, but have you ever seen the the documentary Gaia Girls? Of course. I, m- I remember there was a really sort of like famous bit in that where there's a girl trying to do some drop kicks and and Mako Satomura is just like, this is rubbish, and she just drop kicks this girl right in the face, and yeah. uh, and, and sort of gives her a real dress and down and says like, you know, you can't do it like that, you can't debut like that, and and you know, really sort of you know, it's very very harsh, and I think for people who especially aren't used to seeing stuff like that. It was a really sort of shocking scene. Have you, I mean, have you ever experienced, maybe not personally, but have you seen stuff like that in in dojos in, in Japan? Well, I mean, Mako's yet to drop kick me in the face, so I haven't <laughs> quite done that yet. But fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. No, um, that that all goes back to really um, overall them being like such perfectionists at the sport. Um, they don't want to, you know. When you wear your that dojo's flag, you're like that's representing that dojo. Like if you know, we have a couple debuts coming up for JWP, if those girls come out and, like, they don't look good, like, I mean, that makes JWP look bad. That makes maybe other girls who want to join JWP think, well, those girls aren't very good, so maybe it's not very good training. It makes the fans think less of the company. It just 
it's a big whirlwind of like negativity if it's mm. not good. So I mean, no one's gonna be perfect in their first match, like except you know Akiyama. But <laughs> like, um, I mean, it's really difficult, like to you know to prepare such a thing. So they are really really hard on the young girls. And um, you know, back then girls were a little bit younger than they are now debuting. Like um, Toyota, I think she said she was like 15 when she was training. So. It's just like so much to fathom, like being a little, like a young high school girl, like going through all that, you know. But um, yeah, so they're hard on them. But I mean, I think that you have to be hard on the young girls because I mean, if you're not, then you're just shaping like weak leaders for the future, and you know, we need strong leaders. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the thing about it is, I mean, I know, I know that that scene in, in Guy Girls is particularly sort of, as I say, shocking for people who've never sort of seen anything like that, but you can still tell that the whole way through when, when Sadamura's given her the, you know, the dress and down, she's still sort of, you know, doing it in a nice way, you know, and then she's sort of telling her to go and, you know, clean herself up and, and so on, so it, it's not it's not harsh for the sake of harshness, it's, it's harsh for the sake of, uh, of, as you say, maintaining a standard. Right, absolutely, and, you know, she has a high standard that she sets, um, you know she has really good graduates. If you, you know, I'm sure you followed. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I just like there are a few companies I know out there that are kind of like a little bit more loose with training these days, and it really shows in the in the shows. It shows in attendance. It shows in DVD sales. It shows in everything. And um, if everyone had really high standards, um, the sport would be better overall. I mean, worldwide. You know, but. Not everybody does, you know. It's it's hard to. It's that's a, hard that's to, a worldwide like, not, problem. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Most definitely. You got people. But with... it's, it's hard to not compromise um, your standards at this point with wrestling's like popularity declining. You know, so it's kind of unfortunate. But yeah, I'm sure for like the regular like like fly by day fan like to see like just this girl like randomly like kicking this other girl in the face is just like mind blowing. But. Um, I think it's necessary. I say, why not? <laughs> um, actually, you know what? It's, it's probably it's probably an interesting point to to transition into something that I kind of knew I wanted to speak to you about. Um, uh-huh. You weren't necessarily near where it happened, but Mako Sadamura and her girls would have been, as far as Sendai is concerned. 2011 mm-hmm. saw the big earthquake and, and, and tsunami in Japan, um, and it's you know you guys are still getting quakes now. Um, you tweeted a bit about this when it happened, and you know it was through yourself and people like in New Japan, like you know MVP and Giant Bernard and so on. I sort of you know as a wrestling fan got a personal view of what it was like being over there at the time. But I mean, just if we can, just let's talk a little bit about just living through that time. How scary was it as a as, as a time? But yeah, for me personally, it was just like really like surprising, like. Um, the night before, I've, I've never been in an earthquake, like, I'm from a state called Ohio, <laughs> and we have tornadoes there, <laughs> so we don't have earthquakes, um, or tsunamis, no less, um, so, yeah, like, the night before the earthquake, there was, like, a little one, um, you know, and I just, it was, like, at 2 a.m. or something like that, and, the, like, so I just, like, I have a ceiling light, so, like, I just noticed my ceiling light move, and I was like, oh, okay, this is an earthquake, like, all right, this isn't so bad, like, no big deal, like, nothing was falling over, you know? Um, and then I was at the gym the next day, and um, luckily, like, there's one boy that speaks English that I could just panic to. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, when it happened, I was just like, whoa, like, what's going on? <laughs> what is all this business about? And he's like, oh, it's, it's, it's an earthquake. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, and then, like, I just, like, saw the street, and it's just, like, everybody's, like, flocking, like, like, out of a zombie movie, like, just running around, like, massacre like it is just nuts and i'm sitting there thinking like i don't know like i'm not a pro earthquake person but like why would you want to be outside amongst all these tall buildings if there was an earthquake <laughs> i just felt safe inside, but that, that was like my first thought like why, why are they doing that um but yeah it was, it was a very crazy night like people were just walking around in, like hard hats and like stuff like that like apparently most japanese businesses have like earthquake survival guides and they include hard hats and like flashlights and stuff and it was just crazy like the um you know tokyo has like a huge um train system obviously and so the trains were shut down the buses were shut down taxis weren't moving so like it's just like every every like form of transportation was walking and so the streets were just like just packed like like i can't even like describe it like 
I had girlfriends that, like, they called me, they're like, are you okay? You know, and, of course, our cell phone towers were down, so we were getting messages really late. But, like, are you okay? I'm, like, I'm walking home seven miles. It's taking, like, four hours. Like, I'm <laughs> just, like, that's, that's horrible. And, you know, this is just Tokyo. Like you said, this is, like, six hours from, you know, the epicenter. And so, you know, Sunday was horrible. And um, as soon as, like, I, like, I came and, like, researched it, as soon as it happened, I'm like, you know, where did this happen? Like, it couldn't have been in Tokyo, even though it was really, really strong here. Like, you know, I can't even imagine what it was like in Sendai. So I actually did send um, Mako a, like a, a text message like immediately. I was like, you know, are you okay? And she replied to it like immediately, which was really nice. But I didn't get it until like later that night. So I was just like flipping out like all day. Like she's fine, you know. And um, the other girls like they don't tweet, 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 whatever you want to call it, <laughs> um, <laughs> from Sendai. So luckily, like Mako like said like everybody was fine. So. Um, yeah, like, luckily, everyone was happy, and I had just um, debuted for Sendai, like, a couple months before, or, like, a month before, like, really, really close to the time it happened, so, um, I had, like, just became friends with everybody and stuff, which was, like, so great, but the whole, like, it was, it was hard, you know, like, people were, you know, people were terrified, of course, and so, like, um, they went, like, in Tokyo, like, they're buying, like, all the bottled water, like, we didn't have bottled water here, and it was just, like, that's horrible because people that really needed it in Sendai couldn't have it because, like, everybody was, like, you know, being, I don't want to say being selfish because that sounds mean, but, you know, they were just, like, being a little bit worried and, you know, just buying everything up and stuff, and so it was just, like, hard to, you know, hard to imagine how everything that was going on in Sendai, and I still haven't been up there, so I haven't seen any of it, but um, I heard that Sendai Girls just ran a show, and they, like, had, like, a really great turnout, and it was free, so that's just, like, really heartwarming. Yeah, um, and and then, I mean, you had the Fukushima nuclear plant thing as well. Huh. Uh, I mean, did you ever sort of think, good God, I'm actually going to die here? No, like, like, everybody was like flipping out and like so many foreigners left and everything and like I think like most countries embassies were offering like free tickets like to get out and everything mm. and but, like Fukushima is so far away from like Tokyo people like I, everyone like went to Osaka which is like six hours west like I don't know how far that makes it from Sendai technically but like just very very far like Fukushima is like already far away from us like but I don't know I mean I'm not like a scientist or anything but I felt like to worry about like my hair wasn't falling out or anything so it's all good right like i mean i was a little nervous about the water because they're like don't drink the tap water don't brush your teeth keep your mouth closed in the shower and i was like oh great this is like mexico all over again and um, <laughs> and i was like well how can i i can't buy water at the store because it's all sold out um and i was like i can't drink the water i was like how? and i drank coffee and tea for like two days straight by the way like it was just like a very big shortage of water but um, then I was like, well, I want to, like, like, you know, um, sanitize the water. I wanna, So I figured I could boil it. But I guess when you boil it, that actually, like, increases radiation. So I was just, like, very confused. And I was like, you know what? I, I kind of believe everything happens for a reason. So I'm just going to roll my dice and see how things go. Like, I don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> wow. You seem far less worried about it in Japan than probably, you know, half of the UK were. You know, yeah, there, there, there was a lot of panic for quite a while about this whole nuclear power plant thing, and and you were there like literally on the same country, and you were like, eh, be all right. Yeah, you, like I I I think like because I actually my visa expired um a couple three weeks after it happened, so I had to um go back and renew it, and so I saw like on TV while I was while I was sitting at the airport like how like American media was like making it look, and I I just. I feel like, I mean, I don't watch TV anywhere regardless, so I didn't see a lot of the Japanese coverage, but it's just like, watching the American coverage, I'm just like, man, like, it was a horrible tragedy, like, don't let me take any of that away from it, but it's like, American news was just like, making it sound like, so like, just terrifying, like, never go to Japan again, like, don't buy vegetables from Japan, like, don't, don't say the word Japan, like, it was just like, I thought really overdoing it, and it's like, Japan's still a really beautiful, lovely place. Like, it, it's just sad to me, like, tourism could ever suffer just because people listen to, like, people that over overdo it on the news, you know what I mean? Well, isn't that completely counterproductive to say, uh, to say you know, don't buy things from Japan and, 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 you know, don't visit Japan and things like that? Like you're saying, it's, you, you, you didn't seem to feel like you were in any danger at all. And then people are saying, don't go there and don't buy their stuff. So their economy takes a dip and then everybody t- gets into uh, much more trouble because of that. 
Yeah, and like you said, it's completely counterproductive because it's like, you know, text message the Red Cross to donate 10 bucks, then it's like, oh, don't get, you know, don't support Japan in any way, like, don't even buy a t-shirt there, you know? So you're right, completely counterproductive. Hmm. That's strange. Um, yeah, well, I mean, thanks very much for that, because it was very interesting just to hear a, you know, a first-hand sort of account of that, because as I say, it's, it, it's very different to, to how the, the news media portrayed it, so... But, I, I apologise well, for that, by the way. <laughs> you, you are part of as the... A, uh, yeah, as a broadcaster and journalist, I do apologise for causing the panic. <laughs> I don't think... You're I'm... the guy from BBC, are you? I, I Oh, my God. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I look <laughs> I like you, but it's not me. It's not me. No. <laughs> You're not the first person to say that, either. <laughs> You sound just like him. Oh but my god! But maybe that's because no, I don't talk to other people there. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, all right, let's um, let's move on then. And you, you mentioned briefly, um, you know, when you said don't drink the water, you mentioned Mexico, and I wanted to mention a little bit of Mexico because um, you, you you wrestled there fairly, uh, you know, quite a few times, uh, mostly for quite uh, extensively. Yeah, mostly for uh, Lucha Libre Feminil, um, LLF. You, you wrestle under a mask as Dark Unicorn. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask you a specific story about this that I remember hearing at the time, and I remember thinking, that can't be true. Um, so now that I've actually got you on the line, I can actually ask you. You uh, you, you ended up dropping your mask uh, as Dark Unicorn at uh, the um, LLF 10th anniversary. A girl called Angelica as part of a tournament, I believe it was. And um, so when you unmask, then you have to say, you know, my name is Haley Hatred from Ohio. I have so many years experience, blah, 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 blah. Um, There was a story that came out then after that, that the commission had got upset at that because you had wrestled in Monterey um, prior to that, I think for a triple A spot show um, as Haley Hatred. And they were upset that you kind of, I, I guess it was disrespected the mask by wrestling unmasked before you'd actually lost your mask. Um, and that you were then getting suspended from wrestling in that area. Yes, yes. Is, is, um, is that is that at all true? Because that just blows my brain. Yeah, that's about ninety five percent true. Um, okay. So I, <laughs> um, I wrestled on and off for LLF for like uh, three or three and a half years, and um, like by far I was like the longest going foreigner with a mask. Um, and and so. Um, I ended up, I, I've worked for other companies while I was in Mexico, too. Um, it, typically, though, in Mexico, it's just, like, I don't even know half the companies I've worked for. Like, <laughs> you, they just book you, like, at arenas, yeah. and, like, they tell you the arena name. So, like, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm wrestling here. But um, the opportunity to wrestle with AAA presented itself, and um, when I met with AAA office and everything, they were like, yeah, we'd like to use you without your mask. And so, um, you know... I, 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 I'm not a completely naive girl, but um, I, I'm a little bit. <laughs> and, um, so I said, you know, is, is that okay? Because I, I wrestle for um, another company and I wear a mask here. Um, you know, is, is that all right? <laughs> like, you know, and they were like, yeah, you know, it's, it's not a problem. And I said, okay. And um, my company was, you know, supposedly cool with me wrestling for AAA and AAA was cool with me wrestling wherever I wanted. So it was supposed to be this big happy ordeal. So um, I worked for AAA for you know, a handful of times without a mask, and um, you know I both balleted and wrestled, um, and I traveled you know not only Monterey but I traveled to other cities doing it as well. And then um, the uh, tournament came up; it was a mask tournament with um, LLF, and like the I think the person who lost the most matches ended up um, losing the mask. So like my first match I got DQ'd, and then my second match um, I lost. And then my third match I lost, which indefinitely like put me in the worst amount for points. Um, and I lost my mask to, you know, Angelica or Angelica, how we would say it. Um, and, um, yeah, so she won my mask and then, you know, they said, um, they announced my name. It's not Haley Hatred, by the way, but, uh, I'll let you guys do the homework on that. Yeah, gotcha. And, uh, you know, the, and which was actually something like, I was like, oh, you know, they, they actually announced my real name incorrectly. So that was funny too. But, oh, okay. um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, they told my little, um, story so people could easily stalk me and uh, <laughs> and then um yeah so then i um it all it kind of all started like um i will say like i do love mexico but um i do find them like especially the press to be like very like um 
very gossipy and very like they they love their scandals like like more than any other country I've experienced like they they love to push the button you know and so um there was a guy there who um he he knew I was doing both shows which apparently he was like one of the very few people who knew I was both Dark Unicorn masked and um, Haley Hatred without a mask um and so he like threatened to put that in the paper before the mask tournament which obviously would have you know really hurt LLF's, you know, big show. And um, so, like, LLF's, like, promoter, like, asked me to call this guy and, like, ask him to not do that, um, which I think speaks speak Spanish, you know, so I was just, like, <clears throat> I called him, I was like, hi, do you speak English? And he's like, no, and so then my friend's, like, talking to him, and, like, um, so then they hang up the phone. It doesn't go well. Then this guy, like, the, the um, this is such a gossipy, dramatic story. I'm so sorry. This is taking so long. <laughs> um, this guy, like, he goes and says, like, like, my friend, like, threatened him or something like that, like, and, um, I'm pretty sure my friend didn't, you know, even though I didn't speak Spanish at the time, um, he was, like, you know, you threatened me, and, like, all this terribleness, and I, like, I'm writing the story, and then, like, I think there was, like, I don't know the juicy details from here, honestly, like, I think there was a payoff involved, and, and, um, anyway, the guy didn't print the story, (laughs) um, so then he printed the story afterwards, and said that I ruffled his balls, and said that, like, um, you know, I did disrespect the mask and whatnot. Um, so then I did have to go to the commission. You do have, there is a wrestling commission in Monterey. Um, I think in most of Mexico there is. Mm. You go to the commission and, like, talk to them. And, um, like, the commissioner, of course, had just changed, so he didn't really know the rules. And he was like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh and, you know, everything's just going lovely at this point. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know the rules. And, and basically it all boils down to you, you're not allowed to have more than one character. Right. So... Yeah, so I, I can't be Haley Hatred, I can't be Dark Unicorn or whatever. And so then we brought up, like, the fact that, like, there's people running around Monterey with, like, five or six characters. <laughs> um, like, he was like, yeah, it's okay for them, but you can't do it. So it was, it was, um, it, since, since it was so much in the papers, like, I was getting mad famous off, off of being in the papers. <laughs> um, since it was just in the paper so much, basically they had to make an example of me. So they suspended me for, like, two weeks, so I couldn't, like, appear at wrestling. Is that all it was, two weeks? Okay. Yeah, it was, like, it was so ridiculous, and, like, I didn't lose any fans over it, people, like, were on my side about it, like, you know, I was, like, I wasn't trying to, you know, but why would I d- disrespect, like, Mexican tradition, like, obviously if I knew I wasn't allowed to have more than one character, I wouldn't, um, but everybody told me it was fine, you know, and I, I mean, I, I have, I know the history of, like, Lucha Libre, and, like, not all of it, but I, I have a really decent grasp on it, and I've trained there for, you know, quite a few years, but, like, I don't know, like, the nitty-gritty, like, you can't have multiple characters, and I'm, like, if you look at companies, like, I won't name names, but, you know, if you look at companies across the states, there's people, like, with a dozen characters and all kinds of masks, sure. <laughs> like, so, if I would have wore two different masks, I would have still gotten in trouble, like, probably my face, or the mask, or what, so, I just... It just ended up being quite silly in the end, but um, they did have to, you know, make an example of me, so there was still a little bit of, like, honor and tradition upheld in Lucha Libre. Um, Aww. That's and wonderful. that's the, the big fun story. There you go. I just remember reading at the time and thinking, that can't be true, but, yeah, it turns out it was, so there you go. It's so wow. ridiculous it can't be true, right? Yeah, really. I should have known it was so ridiculous it must be true. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, we've actually kind of gone backwards in your career now, so we may, we may as well go back to the um, to, to the US now, which is kind of the, the first place that we, we had seen you, and probably a lot of people listening to this maybe haven't seen you since then. Um, yeah, I know, right? Because you've, you know, you've changed. You've changed quite a lot as far as you know your, your your style, your look, and pretty much everything about you since those early days. Um, People might remember you from uh, from IWA Mid South and, and some of the early chick fights and so on. Um, wanted to mention actually one match. Um, I hope you don't mind me doing this, but it was it was a match for for IWA Mid South. It was Mickey Knuckles' first ever match was against you, <laughs> and um, you know there probably was a lot of pressure on you given that you know this was you know Mickey Knuckles and. This is her first match, and, and you went out there, and you know you managed to power bomb her on the back of a chair, and I swear to God, I thought she was dead. Um, did, what did you? You and the rest of the world. What, what did you think at the time? Did you think, oh Jesus Christ, I've killed her? Um. Well, I I honestly I couldn't see 
<laughs> how she landed um, because, you know, like she was in front of my face. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know it was that bad until, like, I saw the tape and I was just like, whoa, like, that, that sucks. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, um, total, I was still very young in my career, so, you know, total accident. Um, I, yeah, like, to, to powerbomb someone on the two chairs while they're sitting in front of your face and you really can't be around them, it was difficult. Um, but completely my fault, completely my mistake, and um, completely unfortunate. Um, but on the bright side of that, like, she's become, like, one of my favorite opponents. Like, she's completely fantastic. I trust her with my life. And, you know, every crazy little deathmatch thing that I do ends up being with her um, just because she's so talented at it. So, yeah. Um, I, I would like to think, like, I mean, to at least look on the bright side of things, like, it, it was a... Like, I don't want to say it was a good thing for her, like, that's a horrible <laughs> thing, but, um, like, I really, I mean, she ended up, you know, she, you don't know how someone's going to be from their first match, you know, you can't imagine how their career is going to be shaped, but, um, I think, like, if, if there's going to be anything, like, that's going to, you know, shape, like, this crazy, bad, you know, bad career, I don't know if I can call some guy, um, for a girl, um, like, that's it, you know what I mean? Like, this girl, like, she got, like, power bombs on the back of two chairs, like, looked like she broke her neck, and then she, like, went and rest, like, two matches later, you know? So, I mean, it doesn't get much more, like, strong than that. Like, so, well, give good me, for her, and, you know, I, I really um, enjoy every time I get in the ring with her. So. I mean, given, given that her her whole thing was that she was, you know, sort of the toughest woman around, that she was, like, you know, hardcore and all that sort of stuff. It kind of, to a certain extent, would have helped build that uh, that gimmick right from right from the first match. Absolutely, yeah. And, um, I wasn't really sure, like, I mean, I didn't know if she was going to... I didn't know that she was a hardcore wrestler when we first wrestled. Like, she's actually very, very good on the mat. I think that's, like, a, a, a big secret to people. She'd done a lot um, of training with Chris Hero, and I know, I know that back in the day as well. Yeah. He's genius on the mat, so she is, you know, she picked it up. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what a great coach. But, yeah, like, I, I didn't know. I, I mean, I, like, I didn't know she was going to be, like, a hardcore wrestler or anything like that. Not that that would matter, like, going into the match or anything like no. that. But, um, yeah, I mean, because her and I, our next match was a chick fight from there. Um, and it was interesting to see how her career, like, took off and, like, and in, in, in ended up, you know, shaped I should say um with the hardcore wrestling because like I mean I know that you know she's from IWA and like I know that's like a quote-unquote death match bed like whatever you want to say but like you can still like be like a a good wrestler there you know and like, and you don't have to do hardcore but <clears throat> it's awesome that she did like you know she's one of the most exciting girls to watch like you know since the FMW girl days like she, she's really smart and she's really entertaining well, you mentioned you mentioned chick fight there as well, so it's probably worth worth touching on it. I and mean, you've been in quite a few of the the chick fight tournaments when they were happening, because you know they sort of sort of dissolved and dried up now. But um, it always seemed like you were one of the people there who was uh, I don't know, sort of booked to maybe make up the numbers more than anything else. I mean, did that bother you? Not at all. Like when I um, when I started with chick fight, I went out with um, PDWA. Like um, if I remember correctly, because it's been a few years. Um, it's been a few German suplexes, I'm sorry. But, um, <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> if I remember correctly, um, the first chick fight was four PGWA girls and four um, California girls or four West Coast girls, however you'd want to say that. Um, and so um, I went out with them. And, um, like, I just thought, like, I mean, at that point in my career, I was just, like, a Midwest girl, like, you know, like, wrestling, like, you know, small to medium sized companies like there like so to go all the way out west it was just like amazing like oh look I'm in California I'm wrestling in California like this is so cool like and I, I felt like that was such a big deal and I still do you know think that's a big deal like chick, like, chick fight is really cool all pros really cool like their staff is really cool like and I really still like cherish you know my my time there um but yeah like um so I was just like a, I thought a new opportunity like um just how like they do things a little bit different out there you know and and um i think they have a different a bit of a different mindset and it was just like a really nice experience like i i honestly wish i could have I've wrestled out there more like they were always like teasing me like come on move out here move out here and i'm like i totally want to but it just totally like doesn't work you know at that time and it was just like really fun but um yeah you know i didn't have the, i guess the best of luck in the tournament but i enjoyed my opponents like i always thought i had really nice strong opponents it was fun. I liked it. 
Um, another thing he did back in the day, uh, well, this was not too long ago, uh, but in, in America was um, Beyond Wrestling, um, uh-huh. which is a, a pretty unique um, concept. If people haven't yeah. sort of uh, seen or heard of Beyond Wrestling before, it's, it's essentially what you know. It, I think they describe it as wrestlers wrestling for wrestlers. There's no, there's no, there's no audience particularly. There's just some other wrestlers sitting around watching, and it's a bunch of pretty, uh, pretty sort of you know, hardcore, well, not hardcore, but, you know, some pretty uh, strong style, uh, some matches, and you did some uh, some intergender stuff in there as well. What was Beyond Wrestling like? Beyond Wrestling took place at um, my training gym, and um, I don't know how, like, how many, you know, tapings they had done before they talked to me, but um, Drew, the promoter, he said, like, you know, we have this thing, it's, it's called Beyond Wrestling, like, we... I think at that point it was on YouTube still. Like, he's like, you know, we, we put it on YouTube. You just wrestle, and um, you wrestle in front of other people that are wrestlers. He's like, you know, we don't, like, have a crowd or anything like that. And I'm just like, you know, what? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, what is this? And he's just like, you know what? Like, you have to see it to, to get it. And so I was like, okay, like, I'll come watch a taping or whatever. It's like, I, like, plan on, like, coming to watch. I just, like, brought my gear. And he's like, okay, you're wrestling Chris Dickinson. And I'm like... Oh, okay. And, like, I didn't know Chris um, at the time, and I just, like, the, like, the only reputation he had was, like, just being this, like, brutal, like, ass kicker. <laughs> and they were like, he's, like, he's, like, stupid boy here, or whatever, like, have you want to label him? And I was like, oh, okay, like, I'm wrestling him. All right, let's do this, you know. And, um, so it not me totally, like, beat me up, you know, and, um, but it was, like, it was really enjoyable, like, it's, it's just ridiculous as that sounds to say. Like, I like getting really up. enjoyable. You say? Yeah. <laughs> like seriously. Like I learned so much much from Chris. Like in that match. Like um, he's really smart and he has like a lot of good ideas. But like he's just like so intense. Like you just have to step up your game to like stay in the ring with him. You know what I mean? Like he's just like a really really good wrestler. And um, like so I actually really liked that experience and I really like being able to wrestle guys because um they are unique like they they have unique strength you know than wrestling girls um you know and just like just the whole package like you know they sometimes boys are faster sometimes boys are stronger you know I don't want to go out and label everybody but um and so it was just like nice to be able to like be put in such a unique situation like I'd wrestle boys before on shows and other companies and I had always trained with boys of course you know um but like, Beyond was just, like, a nice, fun experience. Like, they really, like, they really put it out there, like, you know, girl versus boy, but it's okay. Like, it's kind of like boy versus boy, but she's wearing a skirt, like, whatever. Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, it's not a big deal. So, they didn't, like, make it all out to be, like, okay, like, touch her boobs or, like, anything, like, perverted. It was just, like, go have a pro wrestling match, you know what I mean? And that's honestly, like, something, like, I've always been, like, seeking, like, when I was young, like, I, lo- I love wrestling so much. I love men wrestling, I love women wrestling, but I'm not, like, biased towards my gender. Like, I wanted to, like, wear, like, a mask and, like, pretend to be a boy, like, when I was young. Like, I was just ridiculous. Like, I just, like, wanted to fight, like, with boys. And for anyone to have the best matches, you know what I mean? So, to be given that opportunity, like, in the early ages of beyond, like, was just so cool. And I think they're having, like, a, like, a show, like, a live show, or maybe it's already happened, like, within the past couple days, but... If I'm not mistaken, I think I heard one of that. So it really seems like, um, you know, Drew, the promoter has, like, a lot of good ideas. So it, it seems like they're, they're taking off, and I'm just like, I hope it ends up to be really awesome. I hope everybody knows, like, what Beyond Wrestling is because, you know, the, the staff that works really hard on it. Yeah, I think it is, it is definitely one that you kind of have to see to understand. So I guess uh-huh. for those people who, uh, who sort of heard that and sort of thought, I'm not quite sure I get this yet. There is some stuff on YouTube, some clips and some screeners and so on that people can go and check out and sort of see kind of what the deal and is. And even better, there's full matches. Like, you can watch the whole thing. It's yeah, there are, there are full matches on there as well. So, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff on there for anybody who's a bit confused as to, or, you know, uh, intrigued, I guess, as to, what's, uh, to what that's all about. Um, one other thing just to mention about your times uh, wrestling in the U.S., um, Somebody's making quite a few um, inroads into sort of you know the, the the big time as far as indie wrestling is concerned nowadays is Jessica Havoc, um, your former tag team partner. You guys uh, used to tag up for quite a while. You guys were former WSU uh, tag team champions. A um, couple of words about Jessica Havoc back in the day. Yeah, um, you know when when I uh, met Jess, like I just thought like she was wrestling at. Um 
at like her home company, you know what I mean? And I was just like, you know, I was, I don't want to say I was bored with singles competition, but I was just like, you know, it would be really cool to have like a real tag team, like not just like a thrown together tag team on an indie show, like like a tag team that like travels and stuff like that. And um, so that was kind of like my thing I wanted to do, and um, like. I guess my aspiration at the point. <clears throat> so I approached her about it and I said, you know, do you want to do this tag team? Like, and um, her friend was like a manager. And so we even like got her as a manager and I was like, how cool is this? Like we have like a you know, tag team and a, and a girl manager. Like we have like a girl stable. Like this is awesome. So it was really fun. Like um, it was like a, a really nice idea I thought. And I thought like, um, you know, we looked good together and um, we, you know, we kind of climbed the ranks at WSC pretty quickly and, had some interesting matches and whatnot, so yeah, I mean, fun, fun, uh, fun year, I guess, fun six months or so, however long it was. Yeah, I mean, she like she's turning quite a few heads now in the U.S. as well, so uh, it's kind of nice to see. She seems to be one of the uh, sort of rising stars of, of indies uh, over in America nowadays. Um, going back to uh, going back to Japan and going back to uh, again, you mentioned earlier on that you've been doing some MMA training. Um, on your sort of little Twitter profile thing, you you mention how the fact that you want to have an MMA match or you've got an MMA debut in mind or something like that. Is that something that, that's still in mind? It absolutely is. Um, and I'll tell you a, a bit of a brief backstory to that. Um, and I do want to clear up, like, I'm not, like, leaving wrestling. Like, wrestling is, like, my heart and my soul and my life. Like, I can't imagine breathing without, like, pro wrestling being, like, a part of me um but when i first came to japan um i to clear up any kind of confusion i guess like um in japan it's moderately common for like wrestlers to at least train some sort of like martial art like um actually it's moderately common for people to train some sort of martial (laughs) art um (laughs) so a lot of people here have like you know especially judo is probably the most popular um background they have like judo high school here like it's all kinds of cool stuff but um so when i first came here um my my boss my company was like you know do you want to have an mma fight and i was just like absolutely not like i don't like ufc i don't like those dudes like it's stupid like i don't want to do that like i like martial arts but um i you know and i've done martial arts but i, I wasn't interested and you know that was four years ago but um and then when i moved here um i had been living here for i think a month and uh, i went to a show and i saw um hikaru sato um fight and i was just like like who's this guy like he's kicking this guy's butt he's like strong and like like he has like amazing cardio i'm like what is this guy's story and he had he had pancreas written on his tights and i was like okay he must be a pancreas fighter or um however it's said in his pancreas here it's like pancreas in other places i think but anyway um so i went up to him after the show and i was like you know like he didn't speak english and i was like mm-hmm. hey i want to rate you know train with you and he's like okay here's my dojo come to it anytime so um it's like it's in yokohama it's pretty far from me i I ride the train like three hours every day like like hour and a half to an hour and a half from like just the train at that dojo but it's like the best like i love pancreas like and i really really want to have a fight there and um they actually one of the women's companies valkyrie just closed so pancreas is actually inviting more women and they just added like seven weight classes or something like that to their women's division um which was pretty much non-existent other than windy before mm-hmm. so um it's really cool like now pancreas is like doing the girl thing so i'm really excited but as far as um especially like i've only been training mma a few months like a, like not that long um but so my office set up my first fight and my fight was actually scheduled to like be the day of the earthquake um, March we'll 11th. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, needless to say, that was canceled. Mm. Um, and, uh, after, after that, the next, um, that was, that company is Jewel. Um, it's like probably the top company here for women's yeah, MMA. Um, yeah. So, after, um, after Jewel's, um, you know, I was, they were like, you know, let's schedule like another fight. But then I got involved in the, um, uh, JWP tag team tournament. And then I was like, okay, when the tag team tournament finishes, I'll, you know, put more training course for MMA. As soon as that finished, the J1 Grand Prix tournament started. And so that's been, like, a really, really long tournament. And, like, now that I have a championship, um, I'm, I, I'm honestly, like, so busy. I can't really, like, devote, like, the time that's needed to, like, prepare for an actual MMA fight. So I still train every day for it. But um, I don't, like, I don't train, like, for a fight. Like, I just train, like... You know what I mean? So right now, actually, the plan is to debut um, in early next year. Wow. 
So I'm still going to debut, I promise. It's just, it's, it's unfortunately <laughs> being punted off because uh, I have so many darn titles right now. That's right. <laughs> oh, life's hard when you're a three time, four time champ. Yes, I know. It really is. <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to my debut. Like, I honestly can't wait to get in there and punch girls in the face. Are you, uh, <laughs> what, what sort of style would you be would you talking about as far as MMA? I mean, do you, doing uh, much groundwork or would you be mostly stand up or what would you be looking at I'm, I'm, I'm actually like a kicker I'm, I have kickboxing background so that's um, what I'm strongest at um, you know so I guess you could technically say striker but um, I'm really into jiu-jitsu like I'm pretty decent especially on bottom so um, it's kind of hard to submit me if they're on top so you know I do pretty decent like I, I'm, that's why MMA is great because you have to be well rounded so I'm not just a stand up girl I'm not just a rapper like I can do it both Good. I'm, uh, you know, I I wish you all the best. I'm always terrified when I hear about pro wrestlers going into MMA because, you know, <laughs> as, as as a New Japan fan, I watch Yuji Nagata getting, you know, his ass handed to him time and after look time. at him now. He's like a he's, legend. He, well, he's awesome. Right. He he was awesome before. He's awesome now. But you know, I'm always sort of worried when you know the, the, a, a pro wrestler goes into MMA. It's uh, it's always a, a scary moment. So yeah, well, hopefully everything works out well for you. We'll certainly be cheering you on. Let us know. Um, what is going on with that, though? Because we'd love to know. Um, you mentioned and going. Just a real quick for pl- like a plug for Jules. Like, yeah. I was just at the show a couple days ago. It was freaking amazing. Like, if anyone could get the Jules DVD, like, oh, hopefully you can throw up a link on the website or something like that. Like, yeah. um, Megumi Fuji was there. Like, and she just like, you know, she's she's always so exciting, you know, to watch. But just the whole card, like top to bottom, was just like fantastic. Not like the other cards aren't, but this one was just like really really well like um they actually sold out one of the kind of larger arenas here um like they even sold out the standing room on the ticket so like they just had the match up and um like it was just really really good like it made me just like you know re-energize my soul i was like you know this is really great like mma declining like what like no this is awesome excellent um yeah, no, that's that's good, and I say keep us keep us posted as to what's going on with regards to that as well. But you mentioned going to see Jules uh, a couple of days ago, and, and that's one thing. And you know, I kind of mentioned it to you before we started uh, recording. But if you happen to follow Haley on Twitter or Facebook, um, you'll get lots of uh, excited tweets because you you seem to absolutely love life in Japan because you get to go and check out all these shows, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're not if you're not off watching the latest New Japan show, you're off watching Zero One. If you're not watching that, you're watching Kickboxing, or you're watching All Japan, or you're watching Sumo, or you name it. I mean, it must, <laughs> it's it's it must be an amazing sort of situation. I mean, you, how often do you go to shows? Yeah, I'm really lucky. Um, like if if my training's good, then I can probably go to two shows a week. Um, so I try my best, especially if there's, like, a really good, like, matchup or, like, something exciting. Um, I really try to, like, you know, get my training in to, like, you know, because that's the most important thing, of course. Um, but so I can, like, free up my nighttime or whatever. Um, but, yeah, like, there's there's so many good shows. Like, I just feel like like I can't get to them all. <laughs> like, I want to see them all. I can't. But, yeah, usually I hit up a couple shows a week. Um I go to New Japan the most. Like, not only are they a fantastic company, but they run a ton of shows. They, like, run, like, WWE. Like, they're nuts. Um, so I go to a lot of their shows. But, um, you know, I don't I don't discriminate against the indies. There's some really good ones out there. Um, but I go to as much as I can. I go to wrestling. I go to MMA. Um, my favorite's kickboxing, honestly. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I try to go to K1's not around anymore, but they run Crush. So that's really fun. And, um, you know, I, I have a lot of coaches from different companies, so like I go watch Pancrase for sure and Rise and whatnot. So. Yeah, there's lots and lots that I I go to. It's, it's the greatest life in the world. It just sounds like if you're a, if you're a fan of combat sports in Japan, there's somewhere you can go every single day. There really is. Like, it, it's fantastic. Like, it's so much better. <laughs> like, as much as I love my country and as much as I love you know everything about it, like, it's just so great. Like. You can see anything here. <laughs> like you can even see little like five year olds doing it. Like it's everywhere. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Um and let's let let's sort of finish up with something actually speaking of 
living the life over in Japan. Um, and I don't actually know the answer to this, so this might be a great finish to the show, or it might be a disappointing finish to the show. But <laughs> uh, but last we we heard you a little while ago um, saying that you had participated in a Japanese TV show, the uh, Guinness World Records in, in Japan, yeah. where you were attempting to break a world record. Um, what was the what was the world record you were attempting to break? And I don't know what happened. Did you break it? I'm looking for the DVD to upload, honestly. <clears throat> I did not break it. Oh, However, no. no, no. I have absolutely no shame in it because um, I fought against uh, Mika Nagano, so she's a MMA fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, Ayako Miao, she's a, you know, she's a world champion boxer. And um, then I fought with another girl who's a Muay Thai fighter. So all three have, like, this great, like, fighting background. Um, but... I'm not making excuses or anything because I'm completely just, like, thrilled with my performance because, like, in warm-ups, I had, like, 200 less punches than I had, like, at the actual um, show. Like, the show was for how many punches can you throw in um, in one minute. How many so, punches in one minute? Okay. So, I know it was basically, it was what? It was a, it was a, it was a pro wrestler, a kickboxer, and these various disciplines all trying at the same time. Was that the way it worked? Yes, and, and the other tag of the show, it's really funny. Um, the other tag of the show was, like, the 100 most beautiful women or something. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> it was, like, the Guinness Book of World Records for really pretty girls. Um, but, um, like, they had they had other competitions, too. Like, they had, like, um, like, jump roping on your butt or something like that, and then, like, getting into a car. Like, they had all kinds of weird stuff going on. Um, ours, like, they, there was another um, combat sports one with, like, most kicks in a minute. Um, that two young Japanese girls were in, but um, yeah, we were the only like, boxing one, and then um, there was also one like a suplexing one, like how far can you throw like a seventy-five kilo guy or something like that. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't know that one existed, and I totally want to do that one, like because <laughs> yeah. I'm not really like a boxer. So um, right. yeah, I only I only had like a two-day notice of this event, so I really didn't even have time to train. Like it was just like I'll just go do my best, and like then I went and I did warm-ups and like. And, like, my coach was like, how would you change your, like, stance and do it this way? I was like, okay. And so I did, and I, like, I just had, like, my best performance I'd ever had with it. So I was really happy. But the record so, ended up being 556. 556 um, so. in a minute? Yeah. Is that even possible? It is. That can't... It, it is. Oh my that god. That was number one. Five hundred fifty six punches in a minute. Okay. Second place girl was, um, that was the boxer that got that. I- Ayako Mia. Um... Second place was the Muay Thai fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, her name's Monica. She's from Sweden. And um, I can't pronounce her last name or else I'd totally name drop it. But <laughs> anyway, she got 555. So she oh. was only one less. What? Yeah. And then I've third place... The... Sorry, go on. Go ahead. Uh, well, <laughs> I was just thinking, I've, I've just done the basic maths with that. And that's nine punches a second. Yeah. Yeah, it is. How is that possible? I don't know. We did it. It was great. I have to see <laughs> a all, video like, of this. It was so fun because we all four were so close. So it was 556, 555, 525, and 515. So I had 515. I was in last place, but I'm but, really, really, like, I never thought I'd be able to throw 550 punches in a minute. Like, that's awesome, I think. That's <laughs> but I don't still, care that I want or not. Like, I'm happy. That's, that's eight punches a second. It is. Uh, well, there's it's another, actually four. Um, there's another competition in October, so I can challenge again. And I'm like, I have, like, two days' notice to do this. Like, I, I only need to throw, like, 40 more punches to get the record. Like, I can do that. Let's see. I'm baffled, quite frankly. But <laughs> you, you, you say you've got video of this that you can upload, yeah? Yeah, so one in my office has the DVD, so I'm okay. trying my best to get it. Like, it's out there. Like, I didn't watch it when it was on TV, but, like, all my friends texted me, like, I'm watching you on TV. <laughs> okay, please get the video of this and upload it uh, as as yeah. soon as you possibly can because we need to we need to see this and we need to share it with the world. That's that's <laughs> absolutely freaking crazy. Five hundred and fifteen punches in a minute. Girl, so, crazy haymakers, man. <sighs> wow. Okay, so yeah, uh, that that's that's a win. I don't care. That's a win to finish yeah. up the show. It is to me too. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, look. Let's uh, let's finish up quickly then with a quick plug as to um, what you've got coming up. Um, we've got the big uh, JWP show, seventh of August. You're going to be defending against uh, Yonayama. Is there anything else uh, massively uh, sort of looming in the future that we can plug? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, the August 7th match with Yoneyama, I mean, it's not only going to be important because, like, all of my titles are on the line. Like, I mean, she just announced her retirement. Like, it's just going to be, like, really emotional and really raw. Like, um, our, you know, our, our history, we started off our, our first match together was um, a triple title match as well, her one title versus my two. And um, we didn't have a finish in that match. You know, we um, it was basically a double knockdown, like, the first the first um, end of the match was a double ring out, and so then the match was restarted, and then we went at it again, and we had a double knockout. So um, from there, you know, we became tag team partners. We became best friends, you know, um, and beca- we became tag team champions, like, suddenly. like So we have, like, a, a nice history. And then, um, you know, when I won my – she then, of course, she lost the championship to lay on in April at Clark and Hall, um, and then she – pretty quickly after that got out with a jaw injury um so she was sidelined for a few months so at osaka when i won from leon um you know she was of course in my corner um and then like after i got my belt she just like germans me and you know challenged me says that it's her belt so um i of course didn't appreciate that you know and i was a little surprised but um but not only like do we have like a lot of a lot going just based off that like then she announced her retirement coming up um which is like just so hard for me to deal with like because i really care and respect about her or respect her but um you know just knowing that this you know this is an important match for me this is my first you know championship defense it's um the first time i'm ever going to be main event in kuraku hall which has been like a dream of mine for a really long time so i'm just really really like stoked to be main eventing it and main eventing it in a singles match like you know no one can take that away like so that's really awesome and then um but knowing that this you know she's only got a few months left before her retirement so this could be our last singles match together and you know she said she, in uh she said in japanese <laughs> that um she wants to start you know the yonayama revolution number two uh, by winning the championship there so you know i know she's going to fight really hard and we're both going to fight even harder because um you know we didn't have a, a winner a clear winner in our last match so um it's just going to be like a, a really full of emotion match like it's going to be hard to you know think clearly because it, it is my friend out there but it is someone you know also that you know I, I have to i can't hold back anything with her because i know she can't hold back with me you know so it's, it's going to be probably like the the hardest match i've ever had in my life i can't imagine ever having something that's going to you know be higher stakes than this. Wow. Wrestling's still real in GWP. Indeed. And quite right, too. Good. All right. Well, we will wish you all the best for that. And uh, do keep us up to date with everything you're up to. Uh, you know, tremendously sort of proud of uh, of you going and representing the, the guy gene over there by, uh, by winning championships. And uh, long may your reign continue. Thank you so much for taking so much time to talk to us tonight with a bad throat. Lest we forget... Oh. Lest we forget your nope. per, your per trachea. <laughs> no problem at all. No problem. I'm sorry for my annoying like water bottle sounds. <laughs> no, every, every, everything's cool. And uh, yeah, we'll hopefully uh, get to speak to you again soon.